Hello, everyone. My name is Rufus Chambers, and I am excited to share with you today. Uh, so I bring you greetings uh, from beautiful Los Angeles, California. I hope everybody is in the midst of enjoying this wonderful event that is being put on entitled uh, The Christian Writerpreneurs Virtual Summit. Today, I'm going to be sharing a little bit uh, about a new book release that I just released entitled Does Your Vision Need an Engineer? And before we get into this uh, today's content, I just want to share a little bit about myself uh, so we can get to know each other as we move on uh, with today's uh, lecture. Um, for the past 20 years, I have worked uh, in the construction industry, most notably as a project manager. And I got into this industry uh, after completing an engineering undergraduate degree a number of years ago. And one thing that I attribute uh, to my undergraduate degree is learning how to solve problems. Took a lot of classes, learned a lot of things, but the one primary thing that I walked away uh, from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and understanding is how to tackle solving problems. And from there, I went uh, head first uh, into the construction industry. And I'm amazed that over 20 years later, I am still uh, in the game, as we would like to say. And then in addition to being in the construction industry for the past 15 uh, years, I have served in a number of different capacities uh, in ministry. I really found uh, my heart's life work. Uh, as I got engaged in ministry. So I've served in a number of different capacities, um, everything from working on a soundboard, uh, to ushering, to greeting, um, to work in the media department, to serving on uh, elder boards, started serving on trustee boards, uh, you name it. I, I feel like I really got the opportunity to work around uh, in ministry in a number of different capacities. And really the thought of my new book entitled, Does Your Vision Need an Engineer? It's really a culmination of my life work where I had a marketplace skill set and I also had a ministry gifting and calling. And what I did in this book is really merge those two worlds together so that I would be able to help people like you, people who have, who have a vision, who have a dream, but may not necessarily know what to do next. Um, with that. I've worked with a number of dynamic leaders over the years, some of them gifted communicators, uh, gifted visionaries, uh, gifted orators, uh, you name it. Um, but, but regardless of your communication gift, um, your charismatic personality, the vision that lives inside of you, inside of your heart and inside of your mind it needs a way to express itself in a tangible manner. And that's really where this book comes in because this book was wrote uh, with the heart and mind to help people just like you. Uh, so as we move further in today's discussion, uh, that's the first thing I just want to talk about is the problem that uh, I look to solve in writing this book. Um, because Vision can be something that is so powerful that it can really take over the life of a person. It could take over the life of a visionary where every waking minute, every waking hour is spent working on vision, articulating vision, writing vision, trying to attract people um, to participate in your vision. And there's nothing that's more frustrating than having a vision, but not being able to know what to do next. What to do next? What? Where should I start? So let's talk about the problem. The problem. The problem that we're going to address today is solving the, the, the riddle of does your vision need, you, need an engineer? And really where we can start is imagining, if you if you will, vi a vision without an engineer. A vision without an engineer could essentially be an idea, a concept uh, in your mind, in your heart that doesn't have a path forward to come to fruition. It's as if you were uh, a person could be pregnant with something that could be 
so extraordinary, so powerful, so extravagant, but unfortunately, it doesn't have a path forward to be born. And that is what can happen if a vision doesn't have an engineer. It's amazing how pastors, they receive visions. Uh, uh, we have entrepreneurs that can have a vision. We could have a department leader or department manager that has this concept, has this idea, has this thing in their head that they know can be so beneficial, that can be so transformative, but they don't know what to do next. They don't know who to partner with. They don't know, uh, they may not even know how to articulate it. They just know they they have something in their inside of them that they believe that they've been given uh, by way of divine inspiration, by way of strategic thinking or strategic planning. Um, re regardless of the origin, they believe that it's something that can really bring about a change. But the problem is, what do we do next? What it what comes after uh, this idea or this inspiration? How do you get what's in your heart and your heart out? And, you know, one thing that I've learned is in working with visionaries, you know, some visionaries, their inspiration can be like a faucet being turned on. It can just the spigot is open and water just begins to flow. And all of that's beautiful. All of that's wonderful. But my, the way I'm designed, the way that I'm wired is as a project manager, I want to know how do we take that vision to fulfillment? How do we take that vision uh, to execution? That's how that's how I think, you know, about these things. And a problem is sometimes the visionary isn't partnered with uh, an engineer or project manager, or they may not be just wired themselves to be able to think uh, in that strategic execution mode. They may not have that lever to pull. So the unfortunate part is uh, they can go to their grave being full of ideas, being full of wisdom, being full of solutions to humanity's problems, but with no way to express themselves. One quote that I like to share with you from Dr. Miles Monroe, it says, success begins with identifying a problem to solve. That is where success begins in identifying a problem to solve. So again, your vision may be the solution to a huge problem, but it's important that you understand the value in partnering with this engineering concept so that a strategic plan uh, can be executed. Because it's important, you may not know, what do I do first? What do I do second? What do I do third? Um, because if you don't, you can just kind of waver really to and from without having an idea on where to do, where to go or what to do next. It's interesting that you can have a burden, you know, for the people. I, I've, I've met a, a number of pastors. They have a sincere burden for the people. You know, a, a good pastor, they will truly love people. They will earnestly celebrate with people that are celebrating. They will mourn with people that are mourning. Um, they really have a burden um, for the people. But even in having a burden for the people, you have to know how to take that burden and translate it into a real solution, um, uh, into a real expression for ministering to the people um, that you are called to do. Because it's interesting, the needs of humanity will continue on. The needs for humanity will continue on, regardless if you fail at, at, at putting together a plan to execute this vision uh, that you've been given. You know, uh, the, there's the, the, another thought is the needs or the problem can be a dream unfulfilled. That can be, uh, again, we're, we're trying to understand the problem. Let's talk about the solution. The solution. The solution to this vision needing an engineer. 
in the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, the Bible says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. One thing I find interesting in reading that passage of scripture, and again, it may be a very familiar passage for you, is it says, write the vision and make it plain so that those that see the vision, they will be able to respond to the vision. And that's the thought that I would like to share is that your vision, it deserves a response, not only from you, but from the people that you will be engaging in your vision. It's very important that we don't run past this primary need that your vision needs a response. It needs to, again, have people respond to it in the appropriate manner. And again, in that passage, uh, the Lord was trying to encourage that it needs to be written in a plain fashion. It needs to be written in a plain fashion and being written in a plain fashion, what that paints the picture for me is, is that the vision needs to be transcribed. It needs to be articulated. It needs to be communicated in a manner in which people can understand and they can go and execute it. They need to be able to understand and they need to be able to go execute it. And what that speaks of to me is this premise of project management. It, it, it speaks of this premise of vision engineering, the need to take a vision from idea through execution. And, you know, that's really what a vision engineer is. It's a responsible party whose primary role or what, what I like to call their category one responsibility is to be able to create a strategic plan so that a vision can be executed. And one thing that we need to note about uh, this vision engineering function or this project management function, and I know that I'm using some of these terms interchangeably, uh, but, but just stay with me here. Uh, one important thing that we need to understand is that this person or this group that's going to fulfill this role of vision engineering is that their role is not to compete with the visionary. That's not their job. Their job is to, again, take the vision and transcribe it into a strategic plan so that the vision can be moved forward. And it's, it's important that we understand that this responsible party, this vision engineering group or person, their gift is to complement the visionary. It's not to compete with the visionary. That's something very important because you may be going through your mind now and trying to understand who can I enlist the help of or who is at my disposal, who's available to partner with you in executing your vision. And the type of people or the type of persons that you need to enlist the help of are people that who will not compete and that will complement you. And again, even as I'm sharing this, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about some of some of the days in, in which, you know, I was serving as a project manager and in, in, in different departments and different regions. And my role as a project manager, it always went best when my gift, my skill, my ability did not compete with the skill of, of, of my director, uh, essentially, you know, the director level, that next executive level where that executive would be able to come in, articulate the goal, the vision. And then my job was to take his or her words and go run with those words, put a plan together so that I could begin to check off the boxes of that higher level vision. That is when it would just work in a harmony and in a flow. And, you know, everybody was moving in their own respective lane so that this thing could just, it, 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 it could happen, it, it could manifest. 
And again, as it pertains to your vision, it's important that you find people that can flourish in their respective lanes. That could, you know, that could, because if you don't, that could bring a lot of frustration to you as the visionary is when people are cutting across. Imagine if you will, if you're on the highway and you're driving in your, in your lane and, and you have somebody on your right hand side, just cut right across your lane and cut into the lane that is on your left. It could be dangerous. It could be confusing. It could be scary even at times, but that's what can happen if, if, if people don't understand their perspective roles in your vision. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, again, this is making sense to you, but this is the solution that my new book is, is offering is understanding this thought process, understanding how you go from vision to execution. It's very important. I'm going to share again the definition of a vision engineer with you one more time. What is a vision engineer? A vision engineer is a person or group that is directly responsible for translating your vision into a strategic plan that can be executed flawlessly by a synergy. Uh, a synergistic unit or a synergistic group of people. In other words, it, 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 it's, it's like, imagine if you will, an orchestra where everybody is playing their instrument with, with their skill, with their precision, just bringing a harmony that's just second to none, you know, and, and it's really the vision engineer's role to be able to take, again, that sheet music and go on there like a conductor and put together this symphony so this beautiful music uh, can be played. And, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm thinking about those of you who are authors, uh, those of you who are entrepreneurs, those of you who are doing some work uh, in some capacity. This message is important to you because there's. it's important that you identify, number one, the need for putting teams of people together to help you fulfill what God is calling you to do. Um, sometimes gifted people, skilled people, entrepreneurs, they think that they can do so much by themselves. And you probably can. You know, if you're anything like me, you think that you're very efficient, you're very effective. Well, I can do a little bit of this. I can do a little bit of that. You have all of these things that you can do well or relatively well in your mind. And with that, you try and take on so much as an entrepreneur or as an author. And it's important that you understand the value in partnering with people that can bring their expertise, their skill set to the table. And, you know, one testimony that I have about uh, this new book, Does Your Vision Need an Engineer? is, you know, I worked with my team and we were able to work so effectively together that we were able to take this book from idea to completion in less than 90 days. It was such a beautiful process. It was an effective, efficient process that we were able to just move very quickly. And, you know, when we got done, I was I was just simply amazed uh, in what we were able to accomplish in a short amount of time. And it really was a testimony of us working together like that musical conductor for that orchestra where I knew what I was doing. I knew what my editor was being called to do. I knew what my graphic team was doing. I knew what um, uh, my, my internet team was doing. Everybody was trying to operate in their respective uh, areas of focus so that we can get this baby off the ground. All right, so let's now move from the solution to the plan. Let's talk about what a plan looks like for executing your vision. In most projects that I am engaged in, one of the first things that uh, I will be charged to do is put together a project schedule and a project budget based on the vision 
or the project parameters that a client will bring to me or to persons on my team. That's always where we start. And again, when we think about it in the context of what you're trying to do as an author, as an entrepreneur, is you need a plan from day one that will include cost, scheduling, team members, deliverables, um, resources, the whole nine from day one, if you if you plan to execute uh, this vision. And, you know, as we're putting together our plans for projects, for clients, we need to understand the who involved, who is involved in this project, who are the primary stakeholders, who are the secondary stakeholders that have a say-so in the project. And part of my role as a project manager or as, or as a vision engineer, if you will, is to assemble a team that can execute the project, you know. And again, for our clients, that team will consist of architects. It will consist of mechanical engineers, plumbing engineers, electrical engineers. It'll uh, consist of low voltage engineers, meaning audio visual security engineers, uh, uh, um, it'll consist of even acoustical engineers, lighting engineers. It'll consist of a general contractor. It'll consist of inspection teams. It'll consist of this kind of buffet, if you will, of subject matter experts that will lend their craft, lend their execute their expertise, so that the project can come to fruition. How about your vision? What team members are needed to bring your vision to pass? Again, because this is part of creating a plan for your vision. You have to understand the who involved. You also need to understand the what involved. And when I talk about what, I'm talking about clarity on the desired end results. It's important to be clear because it's easy for you to drift as you execute vision because it's under it, it's clear that you start with the end in mind because if you don't start with the end in mind, you can start executing your vision, building your vision, and at every turn or every tr every uh, stop sign, you can make a decision. Well, you know what? Instead of going straight, I'm going to go left. I'm going to go right. And you can really get off center and end up executing something that is apart from your vision, your original vision. So it's important that you understand the who involved and you also understand the what involved so that your goal is clear. Your vision is articulated. Your end goal is crystal clear so that as your team gets together and begins to move forward, they know what they're there for. They know the why um, behind what they're doing. Um, so again, we could talk about the who, we could talk about the what, then we need to talk about the when. How long is all of this stuff going to take? Because it's important that you put together realistic timelines, not only for yourself, because you got to keep yourself on schedule, but you also need to put keep your team members on schedule because there's nothing more frustrating than for a person to say, hey, Rufus, I need your help to do something but they never say how long. They never say what the time commitment is because if a person says to me, hey, Rufus, I need your help for one week, that's one thing. But if a person says, Rufus, I need your help for one year, that's another thing. So it's important that as you put together your schedule or your timeline, you're being clear on how long it's gonna take to meet your short-term goals and your long-term goals so that as you approach people, to partner with you in the fulfillment of your vision and the execution of your vision, that you're being realistic. You know, as an example, as an example, if a church planner wants to plan a church, we could pick a city. We could say Bakersfield, California, if you will. If a church planner wants to plan a church in Bakersfield, they may approach a youth pastor that's currently pastoring in Bakersfield and say, hey, I have a vision to plan a new church in Bakersfield. And the youth pastor 
needs to know the timeline of this church plan. Because if the first 12 months of the commitment is in the pre-planning stage, that youth pastor may not need to step down from his or hers position where they're currently serving, if you will. Because in other words, the church planner may not need the youth pastor until month six into the planning, not month zero. So, but if you don't have a timeline, you don't know when you need people to do certain things. And that can be very frustrating for people that you're soliciting to help you along the way. So I'm just sharing that as a, as a hypothetical situation to underscore the importance of having a timeline. You have to put together a timeline that will go, you know, with your plan. Then it's important that you understand the where associated with your vision. Where is this vision going to come to pass? Is this vision a local vision, meaning a vision that will be fulfilled within one location or one small neighborhood? Or is it something that's regional? You know, when you think about Los Angeles, Los Angeles is such a large, dense geographic. You have to be very clear on where you're trying to do what you're trying to do. Because if I say Los Angeles, am I saying the valley? Am I saying um, West Hollywood? Am I saying Santa Monica? Am I saying West LA? Am I saying downtown LA? Am I saying South LA? Am I saying Inland Empire? Am I saying East LA? Or am I saying the South Bay, meaning Long Beach or Lakewood or, or Carson? Or am I saying Irvine? Am I saying Orange County? Because you have to be clear in, in where you're talking about as it pertains to your vision. And again, as you engage people in your vision, these people are going to have questions. They're going to want to know specific they're going to want to know specific answers to really practical questions. And that's what that's what I'm trying to offer as a thought is you have to start thinking about your vision in a strategic fashion. You need to understand and know, is this local? Is this regional? Is this national or is this global? You may feel as though you have a global vision. Praise God for your global vision. But how is that global vision going to manifest? As an example, maybe the new book that you're authoring, you want it to have a global imprint, okay? Praise God for the global imprint. You want to have a global influence. Well, how do, strate how do you strategically get your new book into the hands of people in multiple nations across the world? You know, that because again, if your vision is global, how do you take that vision and translate it into a plan and so that you can distribute your book on a, in, in a global does need to be translated? You know, do you need to have ambassadors in different regions and different countries that will serve as your brand and message ambassador so that your book can get into uh, the various hands of, 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 of different people throughout the globe? You know, um, but again, if it's something that's regional and local, well, you don't have to worry about global distribution because, again, you're trying to focus on this local sphere of influence that you've been called uh, to reach. So, again, the where is important. Be and, and what I'm just trying to do is just out of at a high level is articulate the importance of your planning process. Many of us have written business plans, but it's important. You know, I think about the business, one of the first business plans that I wrote. Uh, it was a number of years ago. I was, me and my wife were putting together a consulting company and uh, we put together a business plan. I had a really good template. Um, I assembled a board of advisors. I presented the business plan to my uh, board of advisors. I had a slide deck uh, to, uh, to uh, solicit the board of advisor members to partner with me, etc. But I remember when I was writing the business plan, I was trying to really rush through it. I was trying to rush through it because I felt as though I had this idea. I got a couple clients. I'm off to the races. No big deal. And again, there was a lot of zeal. There was some naivety in not really 
understanding the importance of the planning phase. And the truth of the matter is, I shortchanged the planning process. And in shortchanging the planning process, I shortchanged the results of that consulting company. We did experience some success. We did generate some revenue, but it was not maximized. In other words, the potential of that consulting company, uh, the potential was not exhausted because we didn't exhaust the planning process. And what I'm and what I'm proposing to you is your vision, like I mentioned earlier, it deserves a response. Not only does your vision deserve a response, it deserves a thorough planning process.